Have you ever upscaled a photo using AI or your favorite upscaling software? And especially if there's text in it, it looks like it is from some alien civilization. Like you have no idea what that text was because the upscaler has to fill it in with something. Well, surprisingly, Topaz Labs decided to do something about it. And with their newest version of Photo AI version 1.4, they have a new preserved text filter, which actually does a pretty damn good job at preserving uh, the quality of text, making it sharper and more legible, especially when you're upscaling from like really low resolution photos. So I'm gonna show you that right now. Now, a few things before we jump into the actual preserving text. One thing I recommend you do is regularly check out Topaz Labs community uh, website. It's community.topazlabs.com. And there's a lot of really good information, including these uh, roadmap posts by the CEO, uh, where he breaks down uh, what has been added in any of these major versions. But also what's really fun is this what's next section. I think that it's great when companies are more transparent with its users and kind of tell you what they're working on. And then you have the opportunity to, you know, let them know if that's something that interests you or uh, if you're excited about it. So I definitely recommend checking this out. Uh, I believe these roadmap posts come out once a week, but you can find update posts for each of the updates uh, as well over here. So if you're interested in the development of Topaz Labs products, community.topazlabs.com is something you should probably bookmark. All right, let's go back to the app. Okay, so when you first launch Topaz Photo AI version 1.4, you're gonna immediately see some changes. The UI has changed in a few meaningful ways. First and foremost, on the top right, you now have this kind of recent panel, which shows you the four most recent images that you've loaded in the app. And this actually works out for me because these are the photos I'm gonna use for uh, this video here. And if you hover over each one, you'll see a file name and the uh, folder location where that file resides. So I think that's pretty cool. And then they also have these helpful tips, uh, these links over here, getting started, user guide, features, and plugins. Now, really quickly, if you go to the preferences over here, nothing uh, here is too surprising. Uh, you still have the ability to choose which AI processor you should use as far as your GPU or CPU. Uh, I typically have lens correction disabled for raw files. That's something I'll do in Lightroom. Uh, here you can now control the color and the opacity of the brush overlay, which is important for uh, this uh, the, the text selection tool that I'm gonna show you in a minute. And then a few other options here, like closing the image after saving. I won't go over, after, over all of these. The one that I do disable here is enable sRGB preview fallback because uh, I want the images to use my monitor's color space. So uh, that's just my own preference. Under autopilot here, the other thing that I change personally is for upscaling, I always want it to upscale to the maximum 6x uh, resolution. So if autopilot determines that it's a low res file, it'll automatically uh, max out upscaling. And that's pretty much it for the, um, the preferences. Now let's go to the star of the show here, which is the preserve text feature. I'm gonna start by opening up this photo over here. So more UI changes. Probably the most uh, obvious one is now there is uh, the omission of the autopilot panel. If you'll remember, uh, the autopilot panel was usually right over here below the navigator. And it, um, it basically showed you the things that it detected were issues with the image and what it was doing to fix it. I guess uh, for clarity, they've removed it. I believe it's coming back, if I remember correctly, from the community post uh, that I referenced earlier. Uh, it's gonna come back in some more efficient way. But as you can see, right off the bat, um, because this image is a really low resolution uh, file, it's like 640 by 480, it's been upscaled 6X uh, or max. And so now we have this much larger uh, or higher resolution uh, photo. But here's the thing. You see here the text, like even though it's been upscaled, if I click and let go, this is what uh, the, the image looks like without any of the refinements at upscaling. And so it does a decent job. I'm actually gonna go ahead, I'm gonna zoom into 200% uh, and I'll bring it over here and I'm actually gonna split the screen so we can have kind of this side by side. 
And so here you can really see how this is what happens when you upscale, you know, and the, the upscale algorithm has to do something with that text and kind of tries to fill it in. So now we have this new feature here called preserve text. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on it to enable it. And it's going to bring you into this text selection mode. And you remember I mentioned that you can control the color and opacity of your brush. Well, that's right here. I have it at this kind of yellow color and about 50% opacity. Um, and you can see here that you can add or subtract and you can control the brush size. Um, brush size, obviously, with a slider and with the left and right bracket keys on your keyboard. That works. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw on the areas that are text over here. I'm not going to uh, bother with anything else. And now that I'm done, I'm going to click on apply. And so it may not look like a lot or it may not look like much until you compare it to what it was like before we enabled it. So I'm going to turn it off here and you see how terrible this is. Like it just looks really blocky and like this alien character. But when we enable preserve text, it becomes so much more legible. And remember, we are upscaling 600% from a 640 by 480 pixel JPEG. And you also do have these options here. Um, low resolution is recommended when you are trying to improve text that is already of a low pixel count, which this is. Noisy compressed is recommended if you're trying to improve text in an image that it is already has kind of like high enough resolution or, or enough detail. I don't recommend using it in these situations because watch what happens if we enable it and we bring up the strength. You see how it, it's just not good. So really you'll want to use low resolution for low resolution images. And then the strength slider, if we bring that to zero, it, it does actually a decent job but it, you can see the effect of the strength slider when you bring it to 100 because it does this really, really over-sharpened effect. It applies this crazy effect to the images. So I generally find that about halfway um, is usually a good starting point, and then you can kind of adjust it from there. Um, but again, we're zoomed in at 200% here um, to show you. And if I disable, this is where the impact of preserve text really presents itself where the value is shown because you think like, oh, this is actually not bad, like upscaling 600%, like fine. But then when you enable it and you're like, oh, okay. Now, of course, when you have it at the, the kind of fit to screen view, it looks that much more legible. It may not be as noticeable from this uh, zoom here, but you can kind of see that it actually does look more legible, especially if we go to this full screen view here. Let me disable preserving text. And yeah, you see how that final sale styles just, it it looks terrible. But then when we enable preserve text, it's completely legible. And of course, when you're ready to save, not much here has changed. Uh, you have the ability to add a prefix and a suffix to the file name. Uh, you can apply the filters so that it, you can see here that we did a 6x enhance and we added text AI. Um, of course, we can also save to the original folder or a folder of your choosing. And then finally, you can choose to either save as whatever the format is that you uh, initially sourced with. In this case, it was JPEG, or you can choose a different file format. I'm not going to save here, so I'm going to click cancel and then I'm going to uh, close this window here and we'll go to a, another image. One of the more common use cases I can see photographers uh, really enjoying this uh, preserved text filter are with these older film scans. So with this photo here, again, the photo was automatically upscaled by 6x because it is a low resolution file. You can click here and you can see what the resolution, uh, the new resolution is over here. And then it also automatically applied the face recovery model. So if we zoom in, you can see here that this was the upscaled version without any sort of processing. And then if we disable face recovery, I mean, it looks like a monster or like an alien wearing a mask, but here, this is actually totally serviceable and you can control the strength of the face recovery. Um, you know, it's by default here at hundred percent, but um, as you drop it down, you can see that 
we kind of lose some of that magic. So I keep it at 100% pretty much all the time. It's not absolutely perfect, but um, it's a lot better than that. And especially when, again, you're viewing it kind of at a full screen like this, if we turn off face recovery, you can kind of see the eyes over here look kind of weird. And so here it just looks normal. All right, but here, the, the point here is to use preserve text. So what I'm gonna do is enable that right now. I'm gonna zoom in uh, to 100%. And then I'll, if I press and hold the space bar, I can pan around. And so you can see here that um, this is kind of the area that I want for now at least to improve. So I'm gonna use the brush and select this here and then click apply. Now again, the point is to compare what it is with preserving text enabled and without. So if I disable it, you see here, let's zoom in even more. With it disabled, it, it just, you have the, this, this weird kind of artifacting in the paint for Kodak and then the sensitized paper, it's legible, but it's, it's definitely warbly. When we enable, you can see how now the Kodak is perfectly clear. There, there's none of that artifacting and the sensitized paper, it just looks sharper. It looks more legible. And that's ultimately what the, I think the goal of this is, is to improve legibility and to remove artifacting. And you can kind of see it here if I bring these two together. So this doesn't have any of the preserved text selection enabled, whereas this does. And so again, the Kodak here looks kind of dirty. I'm gonna, let me just go ahead, I'll go back here, I'll go to edit selection, and I'm just gonna add the K and then click apply. And again, here you can see how the K looks so much better than uh, the O or the rest of it. Uh, or here, we could just con compare this K to this K or this K to that K over there. And so what I'll do here now is I'll uh, zoom out to 100%, I'll go to edit selection again, and I'm just gonna add all of this text. And the reason why you, it only, you only wanna make the selections on the text is because that's specifically what this model is trained for to, to improve. Um, and so again, if we deselect, just look at the cameras and the chemicals, and then let's re-enable it. And it just looks so much cleaner and sharper and it just all adds to the overall quality of the image when you look at it um, at this view. Again, to have to remind you, this was a 640 by 480 scan uh, of a really old photo. Not only did we increase resolution by 6X, we also added um, face recovery. And then with this new preserving text, we were able to uh, get rid of any of the artifacts and make the text that much more legible. Let me show you just one more example really quickly. I'll go through this one a lot quicker. So this is again, another vintage photo um, that was scanned. Uh, and so if I wasn't doing a, a video where I had to walk through everything, I basically do it this way. Uh, here it upscaled by 6X, so I'm happy with that. There is no face recovery. Um, if you hover over subject, that is what uh, the autopilot automatically detected in terms of a subject. So if you enable sharpen, for example, uh, and you have subject only selected, only the subject will be sharpened, which I actually want. You can kind of see, let me uh, zoom in a little bit. How, let me disable the sharpen filter. And it actually does a really nice job of kind of bringing out some detail here. Of course, you can go ahead and um, increase the strength if you want it more sharp but I tend to keep that pretty low because it's very easy to over sharpen. It just brings out detail, it makes it snap. So taking care of that, and then what I'll do here is I'll go back to fit because there's text throughout the image. I'll enable preserve text, which brings us automatically to the, um, the selection mode, the text selection mode. And with my brush, I'm not even you know being too careful about it. I'm just drawing on the text here. So on either side of her hair, and then this sign right here. With that, I'm gonna click apply and let it do its thing. Now again, the, the deal is when you compare. So let's zoom in to 200% and let's go to this sign right here. So if I disable it, 
again, you see how kind of warbly and artifacty this this sign is, especially like let's look at the yard over here. When I enable it, it just looks so much cleaner. The word wool looks cleaner. And everything just looks cleaner. I don't know if 12 cents a yard is even something that's good anymore. I assume it is. Um, but again, whenever we toggle, like it just looks so much better. Like, and then here's another one. So this is with the preserved text disabled. Like, what is this right here? You know, I have no idea, but when you enable it, it has more legibility. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than this. And, and I think that's the point where uh, what Topaz Labs is trying to do here is that they, um, they see that this is an issue generally with upscaling. And I know that Topaz Labs has long been kind of synonymous with Gigapixel AI for upscaling. And this is always, this has been an issue. Like just text always falls apart when you upscale. It also falls apart when you use generative AI. Like when, when it generates text, often it just looks like some alien civilization language. So it's great to see them trying to tackle this because all of this, all of these kind of objective image quality improvements leads to just a, a, a better looking photo. So if you don't have Topaz Photo AI and you're interested in it, uh, please click on the link in the description below. It is an affiliate link. I will earn a little commission off of it. It does not affect uh, the, the price that you'll pay at all. It's just a really easy and, and very helpful way to support this channel. So again, if you're interested in Topaz Photo AI, click on the link below. Also, if you want to uh, renew your subscription, let's say you don't have a current photo upgrade plan, use that link below as well. I definitely appreciate it. So I also have these two videos here about how to use Topaz Photo AI with your workflow. This first one is whether you should apply noise reduction to your raw file at the beginning of your photo editing workflow. And then this other video is about how to use sharpening with Topaz Photo AI. If you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up is always appreciated as is a subscribe if you're not subscribed and hit that bell icon to be notified for all new videos. Thanks a lot.